Hello everyone. This is Zhi Hao from Zhejiang University, and uh, and this is joint work with the uh, from Tsinghua University. And I'm going to introduce our work, Depthfix, Spoofing 3D Face Authentication with a 2D Photo. In the recent years, face authentication is increasingly used in many critical scenarios, and the market of face authentication is growing fast. However, the security of the face authentication has always been a topic in the limelight. To cope with the photo replay attack, 3D face authentication has been widely used in many manufacturers such as Tencent, Baidu, and 3DV. The 3D face authentication system is the one who deploys the 3D lightness detection module. It captures the depth and RGB image at the same time to generate its 3D structures and use it to track whether the object is a live person. In this paper, we try to ask a question. Is it possible to fool a commercial 3D face authentication system using only one single 2D photo in the real world? When an attacker wants to bypass a 3D face authentication, but he, has, he only has a 2D photo, he needs to generate a 3D face to trick the depth camera. So our basic idea is projecting the carefully crafted infrared to the depth camera such that it can generate a fake 3D face. To achieve this attack, there are some questions we need to be addressed. The first is how to generate the depth information that's accurate enough to fool the system. The second is how to let the depth camera see the non-existing 3D face. The last one is to fold the RGB and depth lightness detection at the same time, since the commercial system use RGB and depth modality together. For the first question, we tried the existing depth estimation method, but found it didn't work. The reason is the commercial 3D face authentication systems requires the depth image, has, which has absolute depth value and uh, more focus on the region of nose and eyes. Thus, we propose a depth estimation method. We build a CNN-based model and use it to estimate the depth image from a single 2D photo. And each pixel in the depth image represents the absolute depth value as it in the real world. To improve the accuracy of depth estimation of the nose and eyes regions, we design the L uh, weighted L1 loss to let our model reconstruct a more accurate depth image. Compared with the ground truth image and its 3D mesh plot, we can successfully reconstruct the depth image and the normalized mean error is less than 2%. Then we deploy the digital depth image into the real world and answer the second question. A, na a naive idea is to project the crafted infrared directly into the camera, but we found it didn't work. The reason is the depth camera can only receive an infrared spot and it cannot produce any depth. Thus, we use the reflection approach in this work. Specifically, we first cover the infrared projector of the victim camera to avoid the interference and use an external projector to project the infrared to, to a 2D photo and make it reflect back to the victim camera. Then the attacker needs to craft the infrared to trick the depth camera to find how we analyze the depth camera first. The structure light camera is widely used in face authentication. It typically contains two components, a scatter projector and an infrared camera. To measure the depth information, the scatter projector first projects the template pattern. Then the infrared camera captures the reflected pattern, which is distorted by the different depths of the object surface. By measuring the displacements between the each scatter points, the camera can calculate the depth image. According to this, we find the key to generate the desired depth image is to capture the template pattern and then generate the distorted pattern. But template patterns are stored in the firmware that we cannot directly obtain, and the scatters are not regularly arranged. They are diverse in different brands, but identical in same models. So we use an external infrared camera to capture it and denoise it, it to prevent interference caused by environmental noise. 
Then we generate the distorted pattern from the template by modulating the depth image into it. But how to modulate? We first model the depth measurement process. The projector projects an infrared scatter to the target face and receives the echo. When we use a 2D photo to reflect the infrared, the path of the infrared will be changed. So to simulate the origin echo, we need to project the scatter point from this position to that position. Based on the row of similar triangle, we can derive the relationship between target steps and scatter displacement. Then we expand the modulation method to entire image and get the desired distorted pattern, which can fold the depth camera to generate the fake 3D face. After spoofing the depth-based lightness detection, we find the most commercial systems use both RGB and depth image for authentication. Thus, we need to align the RGB and the depth image. We use a printed photo to reflect the infrared to fool the target system, but find it failed. After analysis, we find the system are usually deployed with the RGB-based liveness detection as well. They use textures, distortions, and edges of the photo to determine uh, if it's a real face. And we find these systems are based on the convolutional neural networks, thus we can result to adversary attacks. As our target system is a black box in the real world, we use a query-based evolutionary strategy to generate the adversary example. Then we calibrate the color shift cost by price printing. We replace the printed photo with the origin image and map all the adversary perturbations to prevent the color shift. After generating the RGB adversary examples, we use five key point mapping to combine the RGB and the depth modality to, to launch the uniformed RGBD attack. Combining all the above together, we design the depth fake attack and it includes three key building blocks, depth estimation, depth forgery, and RGBD attack. We then evaluate depth fake against a, a commercial depth camera and a three commercial face authentication systems. And we have disclosed the security risks to the relevant vendors. Uh, here are the experimental setup. We select 50 victims with various genders, ages, and races to evla evaluate our attack. Overall, depth fake can achieve a high attack success rate against various victims and target systems. When conducting our attack, an attacker is more concerned about the impact of light condition and the resolution of the target cameras. After experiments, we find the depth fake can be deployed in most light conditions and is more threatening to high resolution cameras, which is actually the trend of the camera's development. Another constraint is to deploy the infrared uh, projector as the, uh, target uh, as the target camera usually has its shell. And we find the attacker can place the projector within five centimeters of the target's device to keep its effectiveness. The attacker then chooses a 2D photo of the victim to launch our attack, but he may not be able to get a clear photo of the front face. Thus, we evaluate various face angles and image, image resolutions of victim's photo. And we find the face angle less than 30 degrees and the image resolution larger than 480p is more suitable to be used in our attack. To verify the performance in the real world setting, we launch, the, we launch our attack against a real access control device. And here's a demo. When a legitimate user comes, the door opens. And when we launch the naive photo replay attack, the device regards it as a non-living object and the door is still closed. Then we launch the depth fake attack and find the door opens, which in indicates our attack can threat the face authentication device in the real world. To enhance the security of existing systems, we recommend three different methods. First, we can improve the detection model like increasing the robustness of liveness detection model or using adversary example detection methods. 
Another way is to detect the depth area since the commercial infrared projector usually has a limited projection size. Randomizing template scatter pattern is also a good defense method which can increase the attack difficulty. In summary, we identify the vulnerability in the 3D liveness detection of the face authentication systems and use a single 2D photo to fool them. We then design the depth fake attack and demonstrate its effectiveness in the real world. And the depth fake attack is the first work to spoof a stretcher like depth camera, and it can be extended to more systems equipped with such cameras. And that's all my presentation. Thanks for your listening and welcome any questions. Any questions? for a very nice talk. Um, I have a question about another way to defend against that. If every manufacturer randomized the pattern of the um, infrared dots, would that make it so that you'd have to build a unique attack for every single device? Um, yes, it is a good defend method to, uh, to defend or attack. Uh, but but uh, uh, the hardware of the structure light, a structure light that camera makes it hard to change the the scatter points uh, before 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 each uh, authentication. And uh, uh, if the if the manufacturer have the te techniques to change the uh, ch change the scatter pattern uh, before each authentication process uh, we we can and uh, we can capture the 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 uh, the scatter pattern before before uh, launch our tech great uh, please introduce yourself because they cannot hello this is Cynthia Irvin and I have a this is a very nice talk, but I have a question about your apparatus. Um, in the last couple of slides you showed the apparatus and uh, in a critical situation, uh, you would probably have CCTV cameras around, and wouldn't somebody notice the apparatus? Uh, if there are CCTV around here, and uh, our attack can can be uh, discovered by by the uh, uh, guards, security guards, uh, but 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 there are. Mm, I think it's a problem of of all the all, all the attack attackers that not not, of, not only our work and uh, but but our work is still threatening to to the to the uh, uh, real world devices and 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 if if the guard if security guard finds you are attacking this uh, it's it's kind of problem but 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 I think the uh, the the other attacks have the same problems. I'm just suggesting that perhaps you need to miniaturize the apparatus. It's very large right now. Thank you. Thank you. Let's let's thank the speaker again.